Hey everybody, this is Scott from Lawrence Hypnotherapy and welcome to this video called How to Stop the Anxiety Loop, a video that a few of you guys have been asking me to put together after you downloaded this ebook called Stop the Anxiety Loop. Are you a hypnotherapist or do you do NLP? Are you an expert? Do you either have anxiety or do you help others to solve anxiety? Either way, that this video, we're gonna unpack some of these concepts, especially coming up to this time of the year, something that people really need, is to how to make sure that their mind is working with them to get the highest function and the lowest possible level of suffering, which is really the point, which is really the highest level of happiness overall. What are the tools, what are the techniques, what are the needle movers that are really gonna get the most out of you so that you can be calm, you can relax, and really just focus on the stuff that's gonna be the best stuff for you to focus on. How do you get the best out of, it could be your money, your health, your relationships, but you need your mind to be a platform that's working for you and not against you. So let's get straight into this. So the first thing that I really wanna cover is a little bit about anxiety itself. So let's take a look at this map just to give like a little bit of a rundown of what it is that we're looking for. and. There's psychologists and counselors and people that work with the mind. The old method for working with the mind used to be always just talk about the past, and it's a little bit more recent since the occurrence of NLP, uh, modern psychology, hypnotherapy, and all of those newer styles and coaching that we even talk about the future. It used to be just, here's some cocaine, here's some heroin, and here's a diagnosis, you've got it for life. We don't do that anymore. What we do now is that we spend a little bit of time collecting people's information to find out like where they're at, like what's going on in their life, what's their relationship like, what's their health like, what's kind of like going on as their situation, what are their habits. But we spend a lot more time talking about the future, what they want. A question that never used to get asked in psychology at all is that if you didn't have the problem, what would you want to have instead? Because a lot of people just keep talking about like, I don't want this, I don't want that, I don't want that. But what do you want to have instead? Or what does your client want to have instead? So just taking a look at this map so that as a bit of a spectrum, we've got high energy up here and low energy. And then we've got a timeline here of past, now and future. So just to give people an idea as to like, well, what is anxiety and what is depression? What's the difference? If we could think of depression as it's focusing on the past, it's the mind using what we call an internal representation, which is pictures, sounds or feelings in the brain, being played in the brain, generally while the person has low energy, while they think that like, well, what's the point? Feeling guilt, feeling low, feeling kind of that there's no real reason to continue. And that can be an issue that people can have. And then anxiety is kind of like on the opposite side of the spectrum. I don't mean spectrum like autism because people say spectrum to mean that now. I just mean a spectrum as in that high energy, low energy, past and future. Anxiety is like high energy, it's too much energy, it's too many things happening in the brain too fast or too much stimulus coming in. And it's also about the future because something could be happening usually in the next 90 days. People tend not to care emotionally about stuff that's coming up past 90 days. Like if a tiger was gonna to come to your house in 11 years, That'd be terrible, like if it's a big dangerous tiger coming to get you. <laughs> but if it's in 11 years in the future, you might go, well, should I do something about it today? Is it important enough to me today to do something about? Like, well, no, I'm a busy guy. I've got other things on my plate right now. I've got other things to handle right now. So I don't really feel any anxiety about stuff that's gonna happen in 11 years. But if that tiger was coming in less than 90 days, let's say like a couple of hours, wouldn't you already f be feeling something as in like that, it's already on your plate. If that tiger is gonna come and get you within a couple of hours, like, whoa, I know it's a few hours away, but that's still pretty soon. So people care about things or they're emotionally attached to things more so if they're gonna happen within 90 days. So there's five techniques that I would like to take you through step by step called the five steps to cure anxiety. And it's something that people I believe don't take seriously enough, especially in this modern life that we've got where we're bombarded with technology in a way that we've never had before. We're gonna have all sorts of things popping up in the future. And we're in a world that just never used to exist this way. So now more than ever is time to really make sure that as like you're this kid in the candy store with so much information coming at you, make sure that you're really focusing on the things 
that are gonna help you the most, the needle movers that are gonna get you the most results out of your mind, or if you're helping a client to be able to get the most out of them if you want to really build results for your clients. Number one, stop talking about what you don't want. As I was covering this before, that the subconscious really has no idea how to process a negation. So if we say something like, don't think about the number three, well, already I'm thinking about the number three because the number three has been said. Don't think about um, that bill. Don't think about your ex. It's like, oh, great, thanks a lot. Now that you've brought it up, <laughs> there's a picture or a sound or a feeling in my head of that exact thing you told me not to bring up, if that makes sense. Number two, look after your body. This is so important that anxiety isn't just psychological. It absolutely can be psychological, but it can also be something that can occur in people that are run down. We've seen five-year-olds have tantrums. We usually know what to do with a five-year-old who has a tantrum. We look after their health. We look after their body. We send them to bed. But a lot of adults really haven't set up a proper routine for themselves where they're waking up and going to sleep at regular times, putting the correct things in their body, clean food, clean liquid, like water, <laughs> and making sure that they're breathing, hydrating, moving their bodies, getting some exercise in for those endorphins. And number three, overcome resistance to change. Just because things have been a particular way for a long time, doesn't mean they have to stay that way. And so people tend to feel more comfortable when things stay the same all the time. But really getting ourselves to kind of like stop fighting the solution or getting your clients to stop fighting the solution, but even identifying that that resistance is there, it's really step one in removing the resistance. Number four, slow down. Again, as adults, we throw money and time at anything. We think more is more and we just run. Like as they say in the paramedics, that you walk to a casualty. You do not run to a casualty. You might slip and fall. You might be the next one who needs a paramedic if you run to a casualty. So slow down, no matter what the emergency is. Is it money? Is it health? Is it relationships? What's going wrong in your life or what's going wrong in your client's life? The results will always be better from a place of calm. There is no level of panic that you can acquire that will help you see the picture more clearly. Think of it like a camera. Cameras come into focus, if that makes sense. That what you wanna do is bring your life into focus. And when you slow down, you're going to focus more and you're going to be able to see the picture more clearly. Number five, plan something bigger than yourself. And this is something that helps people with not only anxiety, but also helps them with depression. When they're kind of like that ping pong ball getting hit by anxiety, then depression, then anxiety, then depression. They get sick of anxiety, they drop down to depression. They get sick of depression, they come up into being a control freak like anxiety, and then back down to depression feeling guilty because they're not contributing. When people slow down for starters, so they're not in that rat race so much, no matter what's going on around them, you call emergency services for an emergency. If you're not gonna call emergency services for it, it's not an emergency. So slow down and then plan something bigger than yourself. This means involve other people, your friends, your family, your community. Do something that matters to other people because this is what really fills that heart that especially it can be men in one way when people are thinking, when men are thinking about performance, when they judge themselves, they judge their lives, they judge their self-esteem on how well they're contributing Contributing to others is something that really fills that especially male abyss in the heart where males can feel somewhat irrelevant. And for females, it can be something that creates a genuine core connection where they feel better about themselves because they feel like a connected person, if that makes sense. So let's get into these five one by one. The first one, stop talking about what you don't want. This is something that's really killing people. They have no goal clarity. So instead, talk about what you want. The subconscious doesn't understand when you're being negative. So it will learn the wrong patterns if you're not careful. So my history in hypnotherapy, I've seen about 4,000 smokers now. And when they say, I've tried as hard as I can to not think about cigarettes, what are they actually thinking about? They're bringing up cigarettes. The same as when people have money issues. The same as when people need help with something. The same as when people have relationship issues. The more you keep bringing up the outcome that you don't want to create, the more the subconscious, the, sorry, the subconscious has no idea what it is that you're really asking it to do. 
So goal clarity is the number one thing that will cause the subconscious to bring your goal closer. You want your behaviors to be in alignment with the outcome that you want. And when you keep talking about what you don't want, unfortunately, it makes your behaviors in alignment with what you don't want. It attracts more of the old negative habit. So stop talking about what you don't want. Number two, look after your body. This is so critical. If you don't breathe, sleep, hydrate, eat clean, exercise, and take breaks, then you're a prime candidate for developing, again, an anxiety loop. And anxiety can be a loop because it's something that you go, haven't I solved this? Haven't I thought about this? Aren't I sick of this? It's like, yeah, well, you're gonna be pretty sick of things if you're completely exhausted. You haven't looked after yourself. When a dog's depressed, we don't always ask like, hey dog, how's your money? I know that we do that with humans. We, with a dog, when a dog's depressed, we don't always say, hey dog, how's your relationships? Have you found that special someone yet? We don't do that. We usually, when it comes to dogs, when a dog's depressed, we kind of ask, what's its diet? How's its health? With humans, we need to do this a little bit more. And so instead of chasing money relationships, when people look after health, instead of chasing, and they make it okay to do things like looking after themselves, having some self-care, as they say, put the mask on yourself, the oxygen mask before you give it to the kids on the plane, or that you cannot give from an empty cup, you can't pour from an empty cup. You wanna be pouring from the overflow. The more that you give to yourself, the more you have to give to others. I know like in the 80s, we used to teach this backwards, where it used to be sort of with breathe, sleep, hydrate, eat clean and exercise. We used to say first exercise is most important. But think about it this way, this is in order of urgency. You've got to breathe before you sleep, more urgency, more urgently, sorry. You've got to sleep more urgently than you hydrate. You've got to hydrate more urgently than eating clean. And you've got to eat clean more urgently than exercise. And so people may think exercise is the be all and end all of health. The same as like with eating clean. Yes, those two are important. Breathing, yeah, maybe it happens naturally and there's better ways to do it, which we will cover. But what about sleep and hydration? People who don't have enough sleep what they have found, their cognitive ability, their actual ability to think, is worse than any other legal or illegal substance they can be taking that harms their cognitive ability. So this could be ice, heroin, meth, mushrooms, acid, all of these substances, marijuana, that affects people's cognitive ability. Lack of sleep, it's not worse than all of them together, but lack of sleep is worse than any one of those substances when it comes to sleep. And if we know that those substances aren't brilliant for people's cognitive ability like when it comes to energy as in like sustainable health think about like what lack of sleep does to people yet it's the first thing that people sacrifice and hydration something that a lot of people don't take seriously you can lose up to 30 percent of your cognitive ability if you're even just up to five percent dehydrated drink water my friend <laughs> it's amazing number three overcome resistance to change so if you're always looking for the easy way out, then you're not just trapped, you're trapped forever. The habits that you develop around avoiding important steps will eat away at your confidence until you have no resources left. If you're in that situation now, then don't ask, sorry, then ask an expert for help now. Don't wait, just ask. So resistance to change. The thing is that we're all going to, this is really dark, we're not here forever. <laughs> Um, we're here on this planet in this form for, for whatever our beliefs are, whatever our beliefs, beliefs aren't. We're only here for a limited time. So we're supposed to experience life. And part of that is managing risk, not avoiding it. To manage risk doesn't mean just to do anything at random, but it also doesn't mean to do nothing. People often, they get stuck in a rut and they don't know that sometimes the fastest way out of a situation is to stop getting so attached to it. People have sunk cost fallacies or other, in their brain, they have this attachment to mistakes. They've gone, I've invested in this mistake. I need to keep making this mistake. Well, not necessarily. If you're someone who doesn't ask for help because you're worried about what the answer might be, you might be someone who really needs to start asking for assistance. You're like, oh, but who would help me? There's no one around. Well, actually, there's heaps of people around. But it's going to be a little bit strange at first if you're not in the habit of it. It becomes easier or other types of resistance to change. What's yours? What's a change that you've been resisting 
that's been causing a whole lot of anxiety that you find that the more you hold on, the harder things get, the less money health relationships that you end up acquiring. Whereas that when you relax and go with the flow that little bit more, the more you allow back in to your life. And number four, slow down when you think that you're in a hurry. This is huge. There is a difference between an emergency and an adult tantrum. But even paramedics, again, are trained to walk, not run to a casualty. There is never any benefit to panicking. And so what we mean by this, it's kind of obvious. People who rush generally can't see their situation very clearly. So they're usually doing inaccurate steps. So they might be doing a whole bunch of busy work, but they're not necessarily doing the important work. And so a lot of the times people can't see the difference between doing work that's busy and doing work that's actually gonna change their life. By slowing down, you get to see, things, like it could be business, you get to see what are the steps that actually give you a return on investment versus what are just all of these like fluffy extra steps that people do throughout the day that really doesn't return anything at all. It's not connected to the money, it's not connected to growing the business or health. What are things that people do throughout the day that's really not helping their health whatsoever, but they're just doing it because they sort of think they have to because they haven't talked to an expert? Or with relationships, what are these extra disclaimers people are giving or what are these extra steps? What are people killing themselves for in a relationship where perhaps the other person doesn't even want that because their love language is different? Slowing down won't kill you. It really won't, but it will help you to see the situation more clearly so that you can make sure that you're actually spending your energy on the things that matter versus just giving them to anything, which is what tired people do. They have no boundaries. They're not thinking clearly enough because of their fatigue to be able to sort out the difference between what should be a yes and what should be a no. Number five, plan something bigger than yourself. This is about creating meaning. So your life will always feel better when it's spent meaningfully for more than just you. A story that was from Brennan Bashar that I really love, which is about the tiger in the cage. There's the um, or sorry, the lion in the cage. There's the lion tamer at the circus and a man finds himself from the audience. He finds himself trapped in this cage and the lion tamer on the outside is not helping. He's screaming, help, help. These lions are gonna come and get me. And these lions, they're kind of teasing him at first. They're circling him. Then they do these things where they jump over his head and just kind of these little scratches, these little teasers, just to see if they can get a reaction out of him. And instead of getting up and really fighting a bigger and better fight, he just kind of cowers in the corner. But then he sees that his fiance's in there and the lions stop bothering him and they go after her. And this really stirs something in him because he feels that there's something important that he needs to fight for now, something bigger than just himself. He loves her. He gets up, he finds the chair, he finds the whip, he finds all the tools that he couldn't see before because he's planning something bigger than himself. He's protecting somebody that he loves. And then he wins. The lions then back off into their corner or reverse the roles the, the female can be the hero and that's fine. But thinking about how it's a lot easier to find the energy for something when it's something that's important. So if you really want this unpacked in a way that whether this is for you or whether this is for your clients, we're offering you now at the discount price, the complete three week course that's brand new. This has never been released to anybody. How to Stop the Anxiety Loop three-week online course. So it's three weeks of advanced anxiety training and how to fix it, how to really escape that anxiety loop. Hypnotic techniques to calm the mind, ones that are proven and tested, and practical tools for creating a calm life. So it's just $37 times just five weeks. If you hit the button now, you'll be able to get in for that discount price. The program starts unrolling in about a week. So if you hit the button, it'll be about a week. So you've got some time to relax before that happens. We'll send you the book again, and we'll also send you as a bonus as you get in for this discount price. The two hypnotherapy anxiety meditation CD sets in MP3 form that I give to every one of my clients that come. This is the thing that I listen to myself to get to sleep. It's what I give to my clients that have insomnia that helps to get them to sleep within three minutes. So hit the buy now button, get into the course, and whether it's for you or whether it's this is personal development, um, even as points, personal development points that you might need for your membership. And again, this does count for that. Get in now 
And within a week, this program is going to roll out for you for three weeks to give you the most advanced anxiety hypnotherapy training. So hit the button now and we'll see you on the other side.